Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank those members of the time. Uh, for taking the time to participate in this discussion. I do think it's, it's disappointing and I think, uh, I think a little bit unusual that there's no minister in the chamber uh, today. I appreciate this is a complex issue and indeed it's one that probably could have landed in uh, one of three or four departments, but I understood that it was assigned to the executive office and that none of the four ministers uh, are available despite the, uh, uh, the normal publication cycle of, of the order paper. No one is saying that uh, flags are the biggest or the most pressing concern for this assembly to, to discuss, but nearly two decades after the establishment of the assembly, it's an issue that we do have to make some progress on and that we have to remove from the too difficult pile where it is with victims and the past and the 11 plus and a number of other issues. Our party and others, including the Alliance, who have a long-standing uh, and honourable position on this, uh, have been seeking regulation for several years. And if it's not going to uh, come centrally, I think we do need to push for it. Um, there has been the creation of a commission uh, on flags and identity, which after a year released the names of the members, but we've yet to hear any news from it. And as it is primarily made up of representatives of political parties, represented in this assembly. It, it is fair and interesting to hear from those parties in this debate. This is something uh, that sucks up an enormous amount of uh, media time and, and social media time, but hopefully uh, it's a discussion that we conduct, can conduct here in, a, in, a, in a, a, a way that we have time to draw out uh, a point and that hopefully is less fraught than some of those discussions. For clarity, by a regular flag flying, I'm referring to uh, not flags flying from either private residences or public buildings. I defend the right of anyone to fly a legal flag from their own home, provided it's not in support of an illegal organisation or of violence. And there are, of course, separate uh, regulations and guidance for public buildings. In practice, certainly in South Belfast, the issue is primarily um, related to flags reflecting a, a unionist or a loyalist identity. 13 to 1 is the ratio reported in a report from Queen's. But in discussion of this issue and the potential solutions, we will absolutely include all such manifestations of identity, uh, which include, for example, at the moment there's hunger striker bannerets on parts of the Ormer Road. And though I consider them in a different category, but entirely regulator re regulatable, uh, flags, for example, of the Northern Ireland football team and of GAA clubs, which have been up and down at various times in, in South Belfast over the course of this summer. Uh, the, a 20, 2010 Queen study suggested that sporting and other um, um, displays are approximately 5% of the total of things flying from lampposts, but uh, if there is support for these displays, there should be a lawful way uh, for people to apply, setting out uh, you know, the aims and the purpose of the flying. It isn't the primary subject of this debate, but you know, if a set of principles were agreed, they could be applied to, uh, for example, new murals appearing as well. Uh, most acutely problematic, and which should not be regulated, but which should obviously be immediately removed, is this display of, of paramilitary flags, and I, I, I note these as recent recently as this summer in a number of locations uh, in South Belfast. And at the root of, of the wider problem is the perception uh, by very many people, myself included, that in a lot of cases these flags are being used to mark ter territory, to intimidate and to divide. This is an issue raised with me by literally uh, dozens of people uh, every summer. Uh, and I know that many of them contact all of their elected representatives, so those of you from South Belfast will have heard from them as well. And uh, it frustrates me greatly uh, to be able to do nothing. Those of us who are elected to represent people are literally powerless. Uh, in this manner until there is some regulation. There are patchy improvements, and I'm, I'm very glad to officially record flags came down, for example, in the very mixed neighborhood of Rosetta just this uh, weekend. And um, I commend people who are involved in local decisions and local, uh, um, well, ability to get flags down in certain residential streets in Finnegy, for example, uh, w w which are now no longer flags. But there are slips too, and flags appear each year in places that they had never done um, before. South Belfast is probably the most diverse and vibrant and participative constituency in Northern Ireland. Our neighbourhoods are home to people from all faiths and none, all political backgrounds, and of course, uh, many people from, uh, from new communities. And I know that very many people opt to live in South Belfast precisely because it's so uh, open and, and welcoming. Um, this isn't just an issue of, of um, community relations and pre preventing what in some cases is identity being used a a as a weapon, but there is an economic issue because there's evidence 
quantified year on year uh, by the Northern Ireland Life and Time Survey that flags can produce a chill factor that discourage uh, people from shopping in particular areas. And it is an issue of confidence in law and order. How can people have confidence that this executive is serious about tackling paramilitaries when in many cases their logos fly unmolested from our public property? You know, those, those organisations of community control and extortion and drugs, and if their logos are able to fly, uh, that, that shows that we are not in any way serious about addressing them. Though I appreciate it is absolutely not always the case. Uh, flags that do not bear paramilitary logos, national flags, are often erected by uh, gangs of men, sometimes with their faces obscured, and it is not that cold in South Belfast in May. Uh, but that is not just a perception from me. 66 per cent of people in the Life and Times survey uh, stated their perception that flag flying, and this is across all communities, uh, was done by paramilitaries. I am also aware of families who received intimidation when a flag outside their house was removed, not by them, uh, I might add. And, and the police will confirm, uh, and, and many of us who, uh, who have those conversations about the, the cat and mouse uh, chasing to get the flags down, will confirm that the people they're conducting those conversations with frequently are uh, in paramilitaries. I know genuinely that no member of this assembly is in any way condoning uh, that behaviour. And I know that there are people with much more benign aims who, who put up flags and other things but the fact is that there is a disparity and your poster about your lost cat or your poster about your charity disco, uh, which is considerably less divisive, uh, will be removed a lot more quickly. Mr Speaker, there is a, a serious lack of clarity and I think a deliberate uh, political fudge on what is and isn't permissible and for that reason we do believe that fresh legislation is overdue. I want to be clear, the SDLP's preference and our ambition is for neutral public space that is free uh, from, from, from flying of this sort of symbol but we are blind to the fact that you know, some of them, uh, not, not all of them are, are malign, I understand that, that not everybody is seeking uh, to, to just mark territory uh, and also also, we know that that aspiration is not going to be shared by all parties in this chamber. So we think it is time for a fair compromise, and fair compromises are possible. I believe uh, one, one took place in City Hall in terms of designated day flying. Uh, but in this case, we think it should be based on the principle that individuals and small groups don't get to decide about the character and the atmosphere of an entire uh, neighbourhood, and that one event or political viewpoint can't dominate a whole neighbourhood for literally months on end. Uh, as stated, uh, we we support the right of any individual or family to fly a legal flag, but not unilaterally with no consultation project uh, that view on everybody else for, for the whole summer and longer. For the many constituents who, who contact me on this, it's the duration of flag flying that distresses most. I, I grew up a few metres off the Lisbon Road, and in fact, in 30 years in, in South Belfast at five addresses, I've actually never lived more than 200 metres from a main route that is flagged and a main parade route. And I will state for the record, I've never in my life objected to an orange parade along those routes. In, in, when I was growing up, flags went up about a week before the 12th demonstration and they came down about a week after. People probably weren't dying about it. We weren't dying about it, but we lived and we let live because we understand how important that key parade route is to very many people. And we understood that was a balance, that those flags went up and they came down uh, in a fairly timely fashion. Uh, and that compromise uh, has been lost now in many areas when flags are left to rot for months and months on end. And, and I did a small survey uh, last summer just to, to gauge the level of, of perhaps local support. I did this in one ward and I think it could be done in others. Uh, the Malone ward runs, uh, as, as South Belfast representatives will know, uh, from Balmoral Avenue to about uh, Marlborough Park. And I, I walked up one day and there were 23 flags on lampposts. So I did a consistent survey in every single street in the ward that is home to about 4,000 people in about 200 households, and four of them were flying flags. So I don't think it's fair to say that that's representative uh, of, of the neighbourhood. I'm not saying it's a plebiscite in every area, but you know there will be other factors taken into consideration. But I don't think the views of four households should have been projected on every household in that ward and in a very busy shopping area for, for so many, many months. Uh, there's very uh, much reference made to the 2005 flags protocol, which was devised uh, between the PS and I and, and various government departments, but has been uh, eroded in almost every aspect. In the, in the proliferation of flags and arterial routes, which was supposed to be prevented, definitely uh, in flags in, in integrated areas. And I think Finnegy, Lisburn Road, the Ormo, Rosetta uh, fit that bill more than probably any street. I, I will, Christopher, do I get an extra minute if I give way? Because I've got a lot to say, but go on ahead. Would the member care to hazard a guess what year the number of flags on lampposts throughout Belfast kind of skyrocketed? 
hazard a guess when people decided to put extra flags up? What do you think might have uh, prompted that decision? Well, uh, I'm happy to address it. Would the member like to uh, decide in any other areas in which it's appropriate to break the law because you don't like a democratic decision? You know, if people go and, and put up signs or start street riots because, for example, they didn't agree with the UK-wide vote on Brexit, is that acceptable to us? Is, are we saying that you can uh, break the law because you don't agree with a decision that was made by a majority of elected representatives? But the fact is, this has been a problem for a very long time, and it's not, it's not good enough to say because of a separate democratic decision we will break the law and apparently apparently our elected representative no you can come back in you, you you'll have your own time and apparently elected representatives will sanction that further local arrangements in many cases have no uh, have no clear basis and in many cases are done by self-appointed uh, gatekeepers with no discussion uh, with with local uh, with local residents and, and people order do order I remind all members of the house that even comments made from a sedentary position uh, can be noted by the Speaker, and uh, I, I just caution members about terms that are used. Well, thankfully, I didn't hear that. Um, I have sympathy for the public agencies who are called upon to devise po policy uh, and cover for what is a, a political problem, and, and though I would like them to be more consistent, uh, because a councillor uh, of the SDLP was asked very promptly um, to remove anti-burglary uh, posters he erected a few months ago. But Transport NI can't be solely responsible for regulating uh, flags on their property, and I felt for the housing executive on Thursday who were asked to unilaterally uh, adjudicate on the suitability of a new UDA mural on, on one of their properties. But this is pressure I most acutely felt probably on the PSNI who are being asked to judge flagging or flag removing in the context just of public disorder. They can't be expected to police us out of political uh, failure and action or otherwise on any uh, issue shouldn't be dictated by who's going to make uh, the most trouble. The spectacle of the PSNI apologising after removing flags in Ballyclare because there was a riot afterwards is an affront to any society based on law uh, and order. But it's inevitable when we're asking a, an, an organisation that's necessarily impartial to operate in a political context with no uh, framework. So we're not being prescriptive at this stage about what form a licensing system would take, but we're asking that people at least acknowledge uh, that there is an issue uh, to, to be dealt with and that it's unsustainable and to engage rationally and constructively in finding a solution. Last year, my colleague Mark H. Durkin, then Environment Minister, brought forward uh, rational proposals to regulate the most extreme end of summer bonfires, and there is a direct parallel here, uh, we would. I, I, I fair to say, I would rather that's a practice that that uh, that that dies out. And we think there are environmental burdens and and uh, there are community relations burdens. But the fact is, we accept that it's important to people. So we didn't seek to ban it. We we sought to regulate the more uh, extreme end of it. And indeed, many SDLP, myself as well, and I've been burnt on numerous bonfires. Various references to me and my posters. But I still have voted for a bonfire management scheme that incentivizes good uh, good behaviour. So it's not about about projecting a view onto everybody. The devil will, of course, be in the detail, but a licensing scheme could regulate the duration of flying, uh, be linked to a specific time or event, a specific parade, Queen's Jubilee, or a sporting event, uh, or whatever. Um, but crucially, a named individual will be uh, responsible for removal by a specified date, and that if not, uh, the the uh, authorities can act to remove. Having a fair and open set of criteria uh, will empower those, uh, those, those public bodies. And if anybody wants to dismiss this theory as unworkable or unenforceable, just take a wee minute to ask yourself what you are saying then about who is calling the shots here and how acceptable that is to you. Uh, fair regulations work mostly uh, for election posters and advertising and fly postering and graffiti. The, the solutions and the removal aren't 100% perfect, but the problems are largely addressed and the law upheld. And if it's good enough for every other aspect uh, of society, it should be good enough for, for what are, in some cases, devices, symbols in this society. There's a large body of high quality academic research and data on this, not least from uh, Dominic Bryan and Paul Nolan, who published a very useful uh, snapshot uh, of views. It consulted very widely, including uh, with all the parties, um, I think, in this assembly earlier this year. And their top line recommendation was a two-week window uh, for flag frying. But 
they uh, brought forward a number of recommendations that bear repeating that in residential areas the views of all people should be given consideration including minorities uh, flags shouldn't be placed outside homes uh, they shouldn't be placed outside places that deliver public services but they also stress the importance of communication recommending courtesy uh, to people who might feel uncomfortable um, and that to reassure people people should know who's putting the flags up how long they will be displayed and it suggests that this information uh, is communicated to the police in conclusion yeah, mr the speaker to bring our yes, remarks I will. to close. I'll reflect on the aims of that flag protocol, which was about uh, improving the environment of a partnership approach, community relations, and it said a legal and enforcement framework if necessary. It's an important issue, and I hope that members will engage with it rationally. Thank you. Uh, can I advise the House? All other speakers will now have approximately eight minutes. I call Mr. Christopher Stal Stalford. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, you will be familiar with the fact that uh, it's often unionists who are accused of being absolutely obsessed with flags and the display of them. Uh, yet uh, our friend from South Belfast, my constituency colleague and others during the months of July and August dine out on nothing else but the issue of flags in the media, or at least that's how it seems uh, to the people in the constituency. Uh, the limit uh, of her ambition in terms of dealing with issues around flags and identity uh, is uh, not to be underestimated, but I think it was interesting to note that uh, we had one cursory reference uh, to uh, displays of a non-unionist kind. And oddly enough, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, uh, the lady from South Belfast and others who are very prominent uh, any time, usually, it's usually the third week in June, you could set your watch bat when a few flags go up on the Armour Road, the hissy fits start. Uh, and it's not only the SDLP and the Alliance, but it's generally the SDLP and the Alliance. Now, unlike, I think, uh, any representative, other representative in this chamber, I was actually born in the Ormer Road and come from there. And I know that uh, during the months of July and August, as I'm sure is the case in parts of your constituency, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and in other constituencies, during the months of July and August, because they are a special time in the broad unionist tradition, people put flags on lampposts. Union flags and Northern Ireland flags and orange standards, those are flags that I have absolutely no objection to. Going up during the month of July and August, I have no objection to them. And for the benefit of the record, I believe that any paramilitary display or any display of any terrorist organization should not occur. They should not be there. They are out with the tradition that the months of July and August are about. They, are, they form no part of that tradition. July and August uh, within the unionist community is about the celebrations associated with orangeism and the victory of William at the Boyne, which is an important part of who I am and the identity of the community from which I come from. The Ormer Road was always a mixed community. It was always mixed. And people on the Ormer Road knew that during July and August, um, flags go up. And my ideal, in terms of my mind, my ideal would be at the end of August, start of September, they come down. I think progress is being made in that regard. I deliberately didn't say anything about the displays that went up below the bridge over the course of the last few months, below the Ormo Bridge over the course of the last few months. And I deliberately didn't say, say anything about it because I would have been a hypocrite if I had defended the Union flags going up on um, one end of the bridge and then condemned Republican symbols going up at the other end of the Ormer Road. To do the reverse is also to be a hypocrite. To cast a blind eye and to say nothing when Republican symbols go up at the bottom of the Ormer Road, but to get oneself into righteous indignation and fury when uh, Unionist symbols go on the top end of the Ormer Road is to be a hypocrite. And some of those who whip themselves up into a frenzy during the months of July and August over the issue of flags in South Belfast are noticeable by their silence when it comes to other displays. I have no problem, by the way, Claire, through the speaker, for the record, I have no problem with Breda GAA Club putting up their flags. I, I, Breda GAA, GAA Club contributes positively to the community in South Belfast. No. You get to wind up. I don't, have, I don't have as much time as you. I don't have as much time as you, Claire. 
I know. Order, I, please. I have no objection. I, I, I have no objection to a GAA club putting up their flags, especially one that contributes to the community in the way that Breda do. The reason why I don't object, and the reason why I wouldn't, is because that's reflective of the fact, as has been said already, South Belfast is a diverse community. There are people from a, a Protestant background, there are people from a Unionist background, there are people from a, a, a Catholic background, there are people who have none of those identities, and they live in South Belfast. And when you talk about a shared, a shared future and a shared space, the image of the shared space that was painted in the opening section of this debate was an absolutely bland one, where people couldn't in any way express themselves for fear that someone else would be offended by a display. No. No. Okay, very briefly. Thank you very much. Thank the member for giving way. G giving the member's support for the display of flags on street furniture. Does the member therefore then support uh, the search to find an, an open, transparent legal mechanism that doesn't exist at the moment to regulate and make that uh, process open and understandable to the public? Member has an extra minute. Thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. That's what we're trying to work through at the moment, and I welcome contributions in that regard. But I tell you what won't, uh, what won't solve the problem. Uh, with the greatest re of respect, are assembly members standing up in here, tabling down a, a, an adjournment debate on this, mm -hmm. standing up in here tut tutting at working class loyalist communities who put flags up. And it, you do. The member does. And every year we see it. People who have absolutely no connection, whatever, with the working class loyalist community that they tut. No, no, no that they tut tut at, that they tut tut at, they have no connection. Order, order, and I ask the member to address his remarks to the chair. Yeah. We were told that people shouldn't be made to feel uncomfortable by um, Claire Hanna. It's evident that as a member of the SDLP, she wasn't made to feel uncomfortable by a party that names a play park after a terrorist. That's right. She wasn't made to feel uncomfortable by a party that campaigns for the release of terrorists from prison. I think particularly of Dolores Price and Jerry McGill. Mm -hmm. Jerry McGill, who incidentally I believe is responsible for attempting to murder a member of my own party. That's right. She wasn't uncomfortable being led by a man who took part in a funeral where a paramilitary display took mm -hmm. place. Exactly. But apparently, a flag on a lamppost makes her feel uncomfortable. When people, when people look at the double standard, Mr. Deputy, I'm indicating that I'm not. No, no. When order, look, order. The member has made clear he's not prepared to give way. When people look, Mr. Deputy Speaker, at the absolutely dual standard that is applied by the SDLP in relation to this issue, mm -hmm. it's no wonder. They don't want to hear. They won't listen to uh, being execrated and condemned by a party with such a dual standard on issues like this. I said at the start of this contribution that I'm from the Ormer Road. That's where I was born. I'm from Annadale, and I'm very proud to come from there. My vision of the future is a, is a time when it becomes accepted that at certain times of the year these displays happen. That was the case many years ago, that we take the heat out of these issues, mm -hmm. that we can agree to live together. Mm -hmm. And part of agreeing to live together means that people are free to celebrate who they are and what they are. I am a unionist. I am a loyalist. I am very proud of the tradition that I come from. And I shouldn't, neither me nor the people that come from that tradition, right. should be made to feel guilty or bad for displaying it during what is a special time of the year for them. I don't complain when others in that part of South Belfast that I come from display their tradition, because to do so would be a dual standard, a yes, double standard. Bring his I, want, to close. Thank thank you. You. I want everyone to work together to build a genuinely shared future, but it will not be achieved by lecturing from ivory towers. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, remind the House that it is an adjournment debate. There is no wind-up speech by any member. Can I call uh, Paula Bradshaw? 
Um, thank you, Mr. Uh, Deputy Speaker, and thank you, Claire, for bringing this adjournment debate today. And, and thank you, Christopher, for your comments as well today. Um, the unregulated flying of flags from lampposts in South Belfast is without doubt a significant issue for a number of people living and working in our constituency. And I would say, as Claire had said, it is one of the top five issues that's raised with me. We should not underestimate the scale of the problem. Residents are concerned that flags are displayed as symbols of paramilitary control and to effectively mark territory, which undermines their desire to live in a mixed community and unfortunately can have a negative impact on traders' ability to reach out to the whole community. Nevertheless, it's unfortunate you're leaving, Christopher, because I'm coming to the point you've been making, but nevertheless, it is important to reflect that a whole lot of people in South Belfast take pride in the display of flags and emblems, and I've included the word emblems here because it's not just about flying of flags, it's about the, the flags on paramilitary memorials, on um, in community gardens and stuff that I think that we need to uh, give consideration to. So the flying of these flags, um, there are cases during the year, special occasions, where it is entirely legitimate and a positive expression of commemoration and celebration. It is further noted that the display of flags is quite normal across the UK and Ireland, both around specific times of year, like sports finals, local festivals, national sorry, commemorations, and in general. Northern Ireland is distinct, however, in that people from different backgrounds can view the same flag in different ways. I would like to put on record once again that for the Alliance Party, a shared future does not mean a neutral, nondescript future. Indeed, in a positive society, positive progressive society, we need to recognise that the display of emblems and flags is a legitimate democratic right, whether we ourselves endorse the flag or emblem or not. So we need to be clear what the problem is. The problem is what, to many of us, would be regarded as an unreasonable display of flags and emblems, which does not have cross-community support, but not the display itself. For example, few people had, very ser had any serious objection to the display of the Union flag in locations to commemorate the Royal Wedding and the Queen's Jubilee, Golden Jubilee a few years back. These were obvious displays of national pride, and even though they may not have been um, shared by the whole community, in a progressive society they proceeded without controversy, and rightly so. As has been mentioned here that this afternoon, there were the recent flying of the Breda GAA flags on the Ravenhill Road to mark the All-Ireland Football Championship final, a highlight of the GAA's cal calendar. And it can be seen that these were put up as a celebration and were not flying to cause offence. On the other hand, almost everyone objects to a union flag, a trickler or any national flag being left to turn to rags on a lamppost. Even those who regard the flag as their own object to that on the basis that the flag is disrespected if it is allowed to fall into a poor state of repair. So let me be clear about what I've said, because this is a controversial issue and it is very emotive, as we've already seen this afternoon. In one case, there is an almost universal support for the display of the flags, regardless of what the flag is, and in the other, there is no support at all. So the question is, when does an obviously reasonable display of celebration or, com or commem uh, commemoration turn into one which is disrespectful, even the flag itself. In other words, how do we build consensus about what is perceived as a reasonable display and what is not? And how do we engage, how, how do we agree and how to manage the grey area in between? The fact is, much of the work has been done. Many of us may not have found it ideal, but I think the Loyalist Communities Council's Council has been to be commended for developing and adopting a protocol and for seeking to endorse it, ensuring that it is um, enforced. This could not have been an easy process for them, and in many areas across Northern Ireland, local accommodation was found this summer, and it was better than, than previous years. Of course, some places like South Belfast and Knockbreeder Road, we saw more flags than usual. However, the, the Loyalist Communities Council also issued guidelines for the flying of flags which indicated where they should and should not appear. And so we have to rec recognise that progress has been made in this regard. And finally, the last question I will pose is, how do we build community confidence across the constituency? How do we build consensus around protocols, guidelines and local dialogue? What we, do, what we would do well to note 
that interventions absolutely must not do further harm to a process which is going in the right direction in most locations. So out of uh, frustration when I joined the Assembly four months ago, and as Claire and I have both said, we do get an awful lot of desperate um, contact from constituents saying what are you going to do about it. Members will know that I have started working on a private members bill to bring pr forward proposals to create a legislative framework towards establishing the legal right to display flags and emblems for commemoration and celebration, while seeking to ensure this is done with maximum consensus and, um, and it's in the only in display where there is local agreement. I do not propose any specific means of doing this, nor any particular outcome at this point in the PMB's development, as I have just begun the consultation process, and like today, I am very much in listening mode. Frankly, I think people have had enough of politicians claiming that they want to build consensus, but then putting all sorts of caveats over the outcome, what the outcome must be. Let us focus on this need for consensus. Yes. I think it's appropriate uh, to correct the record uh, because I think I have been unfairly tarnished in this debate and I will correct it and I appreciate you doing that. I made comment in June about the hunger striker banners. I raised it proactively without being asked in a BBC interview. In the Raymond McCreesh Park, I issued a statement the day after that decision was made condemning it and have made efforts within my party. I have restated that position on at least six times in broadcast interviews because apparently, like Christopher, many people are keen to throw out uh, the hip hypocrite uh, line. But very very few of them are, are keen to correct the record. I wasn't an elected person at the time of the Jerry McGill issue, but I did write to DUP Sam, councillor Sammy Brush after uh, his local council uh, passed a motion calling for the release of that person. And I'm very glad to say we had a number of, of very uh, courteous and pleasant phone calls whenever I expressed my sympathy at the traumatisation that he's been put through. I will not accept that I take a differential view. I have stood at all times in my elected and unelected life uh, against all forms of paramilitary and it's an outrage to suggest anything otherwise. Order. The uh, member has an additional minute, although I suspect much of it has, has been eaten up. Um, okay. Could I also uh, remind members that, that uh, 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 interventions ought to be concise? Okay, thank you. And I am, I am finishing off myself. So I've said there that we need to focus on consensus, reflecting that if we can manage it here in South Belfast, we can manage it anywhere in Northern Ireland. And I will close by saying that I do hope and trust that the South Belfast MLAs and other elected representatives will engage positively and constructively with my work on the private members' bill so that we can address this issue for residents and traders once and for all. Once and for all. Thank you. Thank you. I call uh, Emma Little Pangeli. Uh, Mr. Speaker, um, thank you for the opportunity to, to rise to, to speak in relation to this debate. In one way, it's a slightly strange one uh, for me, in that you know I am standing in the Northern Ireland Assembly talking about flags, and I think if you go out there and you speak to many, many people on the ground, there is that perception that that's in fact all that we do. We, we talk about flags and we talk about orange and green. And I very often say to people who, who say that, and they are very often people who don't take a lot to do with politics in Northern Ireland, I say, actually, I, I don't talk about flags day in, day out. And I came over to be in MLA almost a year ago at the end of September last year, and, and this is the first time um, I believe that either in the Assembly or in a committee that I'm actually having a debate or a discussion about flags. And perhaps it is a bit ironic then that it is actually by a motion by Claire Hanna of the SDLP that brings us to talking once again about flags. I, I would prefer to stand here and talk about issues like childcare, like sustainable uh, and good jobs for people, like affordable uh, childcare, etc. But you know, we are uh, standing here. It, it is in relation to the rather cryptic, I have to say, um, a regular flying of flags in South Belfast title. I have to say personally, I am not somebody who is particularly annoyed by displays of identity such as flags, and that is on either side. And that also translates into who I am as a person, because I'm not particularly annoyed by uh, celebration of identity right across uh, the diversity of our society. Should that be something that I would feel part of or, or, or not feel part of? You know, I do believe that actually that is at the very heart of a tolerant and open society that we do celebrate and we accept that cultural difference. And that is why, and, and I took part very much in the policy development of the Northern Ireland Executive's uh, Good Relations Strategy Together Building United Community. And at the very heart of that, 
is not the neutrality picture that Claire Hanna has put across. At the very heart of that strategy is around the celebration of identity and the rich diversity that we have. And flag flying is very much part and parcel of that. And I want to echo the words of my colleague Christopher Stalford in this, in that I don't agree with the flying of paramilitary flags. And the DUP has been very clear about that uh, uh, time and time again, that we don't agree with the, the flying of paramilitary flags. I'd also correct something that the member had said around the illegality of flag flying, because we have looked at this, and it's not always clear, and it's not always the case, that the public flying of flags, even from lampposts, falls into illegality. And I know the member should be, be well aware of that as well. In addition, I, I also share some of the, the thoughts that has already been expressed around tattered flags. I do believe that if somebody puts up a flag, and it's a flag of uh, our country, or it's a flag that they feel something about, and they leave it there, and it gets tattered, then I, I think that's a shame. I feel shameful when I see that, and I know that the communities around about that feel shameful when they see a flag that they feel something about uh, tattered and flying from a lamppost. And it's not always the case that those local communities can go in and take down that flag themselves. So I would say to those actually who put up those flags and allow those flags that mean so much to so many different people uh, that if they allow them to get in that state, they should go and remove them. And that's absolutely the case. And again, the DUP have been very clear about saying that. Uh, what I'd say to, to, to Claire is that, you know, coming from South Belfast, and, and I know that most people in this chamber at this stage are South Belfast representatives, and you know, we, we go to events like the Mela, we go down to, to Culture Night, and these are great celebrations of the richness of the diversity of Northern Ireland society in 2016, and I think that is to be celebrated. But what must not happen is that we celebrate certain cultural traditions, and yet on the other side of that, we try to say that maybe indigenous displays of culture, other people's cultural identities, is something that should be packed away and we should be ashamed of. And you know, we've already heard about this issue about neutral spaces. And yet I know when I've seen Claire, who, who made that comment, and, and I think I've said seen all of us, in fact, in events in South Belfast where we've had Tibetan prayer flags or you know, s s s emblems and symbols of the Chinese community or the Indian community, and we're all very comfortable about celebrating that. And yet I, I think we need to get into a space of a bit more maturity where we can step back and say, do you know what? This is a cultural identity that means something to a significant number of people in South Belfast and across Northern Ireland. And we should not only tolerate that, but we should, I just finish the point, but we should not just tolerate that because we care not about tolerance. And sometimes we don't even get that tolerance. What we should do is to celebrate the richness of our cultural diversity. We shouldn't say neutrality for that. And yet we want to put uh, these other cultural traditions and identities right into the public space, into the botanic gardens, into the, the town centre, into the city centres. We need to celebrate right across the place. Sorry, I think Chris was looking at Thank the member for giving way. Uh, and I, th I think we've uh, eventually got the very constructive debate here uh, today, Speaker. The, would the member accept, however, that the, the Northern Ireland Life and Times survey, a survey used by the executive on a, on, a, on a regular basis to establish an evidence base for policy, shows year on year that regardless of her support for flags on lampposts or, or my view for flags on lampposts, it shows that around 80 per cent of people in Northern Ireland don't wish to see flags on lampposts in their streets. So there, there is a significant number of people, traders, with a view that this is an issue that needs to be addressed. And is she open to looking at ensuring that there's a clear legal framework to deal with this issue? Member has a nice comment. Okay, just to respond to the member's point, and I've worked very closely with the Life and Time, uh, Time study over the course of uh, my tenure before I even came into this post. And it, it is a, a, a smaller sample survey. There, there are issues around who participates in that. But it's clear that there are people who don't like flag flying. And that is, again, part and parcel of the tolerance that we should show people. If people don't want to display a flag, don't display it. But likewise, just because you don't have an affinity to a particular cultural tradition should not mean that that should be snuffed out and stamped out in the spirit of neutrality. So it, it is very important. I think it's a very important issue just to emphasise, which is if we want to celebrate diversity, then we have to celebrate diversity in all its forms. Well, the member acknowledged that, well, for a start, this is an attempt to regulate, not ban, and I made that very clear through uh, specific examples. Will the member attempt, uh, agree that attempts to regulate should not be dismissed as a hissy fit? Um, and will the member accept that, uh, it, well, one, the independent research uh, puts it at 13 to 1 at a certain dimension of, of identity? And will the member further acknowledge that the Mela and Cultural Night, Culture Night don't seek to dominate the public space for months, sometimes 12 months at a time? And will the member further acknowledge that I specifically said it should be allowed, just not year-round. 
order. I, I do think it's a little unfair because you have had 15 months um, initially and, and eat into a lot of the time, very limited time that I have. But you know, I do agree with you in terms of dominance and cultural dominance, and I do think it is a case of uh, diversity. But there are communities who do want their, what they see as their cultural identity to dominate their space. They want to celebrate that, and generally it does happen over July and August. And I do praise the considerable work that happens at a community level. And we've seen this with even within South Belfast, but right across Northern Ireland over the course of the last number of years, where community leaders have worked with communities around the management of that, about when flags come up, what types of flags go up, when flags come down. And we are still on a week by week basis reaching local agreements about that. And that is to be welcomed. And it is to be welcomed for this reason. We will only find a solution to these issues with <coughs> local agreement and consensus. And this touches on issues around community confidence, it touches on issues around social capital of communities, it, it touches on issues of people feeling respected. And when people hear that their traditions like bonfires or flag flying or parades, if they hear that those on either side of it, or, or all sides of the diversity of our culture, if people hear that that is not accepted, it's not tolerated, it's bigoted or sectarian, then people react against that. And the reality of it is we can't sit up here, we can't push and corrupt people into a particular position. We need to work with people around that. And we need to find workable solutions. I know that, and I think all of you have been involved in terms of the issues down in the Holy Lands over the course of the last number of years. And I was actually involved in that when I was in the Students' Union movement. I know my colleague Christopher would have been as well, in terms of trying to work with the university about this. But one thing is clear is there isn't an easy solution to these things. You can't simply just go in and say, do you know what, clear the road, sort out this problem, do this, do that. You need to work with the local communities to find a workable solution. And this is no different. And that is my concern. I've raised this concern too, and see Alex Adwitz sitting there many times during negotiations yes, around these issues as well, is that we need to find a workable solution that doesn't push people into a, an equal and opposite reaction to perhaps worsen the situation. I think all of us should work together to try to find that as a conclusion. Thank you. I call Claire Bailey. Thank you, Speaker. Um, when I seen this motion coming up for debate, I have to say I was a little disappointed because I believe that the issue of flying flags in Northern Ireland is not an issue for South Belfast. It's an issue for Northern Ireland. And if it's, the debate was going to happen, I would have liked to have seen a full chamber and a raft of opinion in there. But having said that, I know that Claire Hanna is has spoke widely on this and, in my opinion, usually speaks a lot of sense. Um, so I can understand why the debate has come. But um, in, in, order, in terms of trying to support the licensing or regulation or, or any other sort of initiatives around the flying of flags, I do think that these debates need to be had. And if we want to contain it within the context of South Belfast, um, South Belfast, I think, is the most diverse constituency in the whole of Northern Ireland. And that is why we see elected representatives from across five different parties holding six representative seats in this assembly. Um, I think it is not a nationalist and a unionist issue because the last census, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was a third of the population neither claimed to be nationalist or unionist, but they claimed to be other. And we have a huge Chinese population in South Belfast, we have a huge Polish population in, Ch in South Belfast, and we have a huge LGBT community living in South Belfast as well. So should we put flags up for everybody when they want to celebrate whatever they want to be celebrating as well? I think it's also a very timely debate to be having at the minute because tomorrow is the day set out by the Loyalist Community Council themselves under their own protocol to take the flags down. And in recent press statements, I think it was Jackie MacDonald has called on the Loyalist community to make sure that they are down, certainly in South Belfast. I was a wee bit concerned to hear Christopher Stolford say that uh, a lot of people throw hissy fits when a few wee flags go up on the Armour Road in early June. And yes, you might have been born there, Christopher, around Annadale, but I've been living there for 20 years, and I'm not sure when the last time you were on the Armour Road was. But have a look down there, because there's three flags on every single lamppost, from the top at Rosetta to the bottom at the city centre. I don't call that a few wee flags, and I don't think you should be quite trite about it. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Claire. Uh, I'm glad that you gave way. Do you accept that there is a direct correlation uh, between this annual, every year, the last week in June, it ends up, usually in the South Belfast News, blown completely out of proportion, 
And we've already talked about if you push people in one direction, you get an opposite uh, reaction. And every year, uh, two political parties in particular make a huge issue out of this. And I'm grateful to you also for giving way. I would believe that others are committed to a genuinely shared future, in particular on the Ormond Road. The SDLP wouldn't even vote for a flower bed to go into the Ormo Park to celebrate the 100th anniversary of Balna Fi Orange Hall. A flower bed was too much for them. Thanks order for that, the member. I think that's member just an ex The member has an extra minute. But can I, can I ask all members of the House to show courtesy in terms when the member is on their feet? And uh, some of the conversations are a little too audible. Thank you. I think that's just another example of where this debate is going and how seriously it might be taken or not. But um, I do get con contacted. I'm recently elected for South Belfast, first time being elected. But for years I've been contacted by residents in South Belfast with their concerns over flag flying. Now those concerns are a range of concerns. Some people are concerned that they're there in the first place. Some people are concerned that they're there and left the rot and it's a sign of disrespect, and they want new ones put up. Other people are there that they are concerned that they don't know who's putting them up, why they're putting them up, or how long they're going to be put up. And others are just seriously weary that it's flag season again. So I'm not tutting at any community, and I really resent anybody in this House who thinks that by standing up and engaging in this debate that I am looking down on or tutting at the working class loyalist communities in South Belfast, because I am not. I have spent the summer meeting community groups and people in the working class loyalist areas of South Belfast, and what has come back to me is not anything to do with flags. What has come back to me is Seriously, thanks a million for coming. We couldn't tell you the last time any elected representative has ever paid attention to us. So I've given them their commitment that I'm here for all people and all concerns. Sorry? Thank you. The flying of flags in Northern Ireland is not something I see as a celebration of identity. It is something that I see as a root cause of a crisis of identity. And when people are not confident and people are not feeling secure, that will work its way outwards. And another, another thing that Christopher Stelford mentioned when he was speaking as well is he was challenging Claire Hanna to ask when was it that so many flags went up? Well, the flags went up in more numbers. Of course, you know, when Belfast City Council took their decision and 40,000 leaflets went through homes telling them to be afraid and that they were under attack. And the result was that we now have a bigger culture of flying flags across Northern Ireland, not exclusive to South Belfast. So I think that's playing petty politics when you come out with statements like that on an issue that does have to be sorted out. This is not a South Belfast issue. This is a Northern Ireland issue. This debate needs to be wider, needs to be taken with a level of seriousness and not a petty one for cheap political point scoring. This is not a nationalist and unionist issue because then I come to Pride Week in Belfast and I have the LGBT community in South Belfast come and ask me, where will we put our flags? There's just no room on a lamppost. So what would happen if our LGBT community went out and put their flags up? I'll just leave that there. I can't imagine that you would have the same reaction to that. So yes, I do believe there needs to be regulation, but not because I believe that legislation is the answer, but because I think there's a deficit in exactly what Emma Pengelly was saying about uh, community consensus and working with people and understanding their needs, their fears and their reasons for wanting this. I think the Loyalist Community Council in putting together their own pro protocol has done an awful lot more than any elected representative has over the past few years. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. I call uh, <coughs> Mr. Doug Biddy. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. And, and, uh, I'm very conscious that I'm not from South uh, Belfast, um, but it is a microcosm of the whole of Belfast, which is a microcosm uh, of the whole uh, of Northern Ireland. 
Um, so I think uh, it's important to talk. I'm also part of the Flags Identity Culture Traditions uh, Commission. Um, uh, and we've had three meetings so far, and I'm only one of two, I believe, MLAs who sit on that commission. It's not full of uh, MLAs. So if you don't mind, I'll try and keep my remarks um, quite general so as not to, to impinge on, on what I do in, in regards to the commission. Uh, I suppose the flying of flags is, is nearly an institution uh, here in Northern Ireland. It's become part of our psyche uh, in many ways, and I certainly, growing up, uh, ha have, have always had flags flying in some shape or form, normally on a house, and, and that's transitioned uh, onto lampposts. Uh, and I, uh, as a unionist, really don't mind if people use the, the Union flag or the Ulster flag or the Irish tricolour or the provincial Ulster flag um, as something that identifies them with their identity, uh, their culture uh, and their tradition. Um, and as long as they fly that flag in an appropriate way, which doesn't intimidate, then I personally have got no real issue with it. The one thing I would say, and just to put something in context here, uh, there's only one flag which represents the sovereignty of this country, uh, and that's the Union flag. Now, I cannot see how anybody can be intimidated by the one flag which represents the sovereignty of this country. And in lies the problem, because I can't see it doesn't mean it doesn't intimidate. In the same way, there are people in nationalist areas who fly the Irish tricolour cannot see how that might intimidate me. So there is a real problem about perception, and there's a, a, a problem about understanding, and there's a conversation to be had about that. I don't like flags flying up lampposts. I really don't. Um, people will know that. I've gone up those lampposts, and I've took those flags down uh, before. Um, uh, my flag, my union flag, in tatters up a lamppost, it's just not acceptable, and I don't like it. Um, uh, and I have taken it down. Completely uh, disrespectful. Many people will know my background um, service uh, overseas, whether that's in Afghanistan or Iraq or Bosnia and Kosovo or East and West Africa. People know where I've come from. Not once have I needed a flag flying above my head to tell me how British I am or that I'm a member of the United Kingdom or I'm fighting for a particular cause. And that's because I'm a confident unionist. I'm confident in my identity, I'm confident in my culture, I'm confident in my traditions. But not everybody is. Some people are not confident. And there is a general perception out there, and it's important to take this on board, there is a general perception out there with some communities that their identity and their culture is being eroded. I wasn't in politics when the decision was taken to take the, the Union flag off City Hall, uh, and, and people will know that far better than, than, than I do, but it did have a serious detrimental effect on the Protestant Unionists and Loyalist people of the whole of Northern Ireland. So it's that perception that we need to deal with. Absolutely. Um, I would just like to, for you to expand upon that point about how it had a detrimental effect in terms of quantity and how you could quantify that. I, th I think you can quantify it by. I think you can quantify it by, by purely by the factors, and, and, and people are at fault here. Uh, you know, and you can put your finger at people who are at fault here. But when somebody takes down your national flag, you genuinely feel that somebody's trying to erode something that's incredibly important to you. If you go down to the Republic of Ireland, you say, "Take your tricolour down off the doyle," people would be upset about that, and that's the problem that we've got here. So it did have that detrimental effect. But, but, but I can understand the reasons why, and I'm not attacking that, and I don't want to really uh, get into that. Paramilitary flags are an absolute scourge, an absolute scourge. They should not be flying anywhere. And if I can, and I would, I would take them down, and I have taken them down. But the Loyalist Communities Council, only this year, come up with a commemorative flag, and what did we do? We attacked them. We attacked them for bringing out something to try and bring about change. Mean-spirited journalists attacked them because the hand was the wrong way round. MLAs attacked them because they didn't like the flag. But what it was was a council who were trying to change things. And where I come from in Portadown, it worked. Because this year, 
I could count the number of paramilitary flags flying in Portadown in single digits. Far better than it was last year and certainly better than it was the year before. We have a group called Regenerate uh, which operates in Portadown. And they got together residents groups and community groups and they got them to talk and they come up with a flags protocol which was instigated last year. Absolutely works. The flags went up for our celebrations over the 12th of July. The flags come down. Exactly the same this year. They went up and they come down. Paramilitary flags did not go up. It has absolutely transformed Porta Down. And it has stretched into Bam Bridge. It is an exportable commodity which could be put on a shelf and taken to South Belfast and used because what it is is dialogue. It's not MLAs leading the community by the nose with legislation and saying this is what you will do. It's communities being supported by MLAs coming up with the solutions for themselves. And this was a, an inter-community initiative, not cross-community, but it had a cross-community effect in Portadown. So that we suddenly seen that flags that were up in the nationalist area were not going up in interface areas. Now, it wasn't perfect, but it absolutely, absolutely worked. And all I would say, and I genuinely mean this, because I don't like seeing flags up lampposts, but I do like to see my flag, the Union flag, flying in all its regalia above our government buildings. I would really love to see that all of the time. But it's important, and I'll reiterate, we must bring the people with us. Where we make improvements, we must applaud success. Where we fail, we must examine failure and get it better the next time but it is going to take time to be able to do that. Thank you. Order. That completes the adjournment debate. The Assembly is adjourned.